Hey, hello, everybody. It's Jeff Kibbe over at Metastack. I hope you're doing well this morning. Um, I want to thank you for coming out to the class. We've got a very good guest speaker today, and um, he's done a, he's done a couple of these. He's done an awesome job every time. So let's get to it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start with our legal disclaimer. I know it's your favorite part. Today's demonstration is designed to instruct you on using Metastack and the accompanying software plugins. It's not a recommendation to buy or sell, but rather guidelines to interpreting and using specific indicators and features within the software. The information software and techniques presented today should only be used by investors who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. And Metastock shall have no liability for any investment decisions based on the use of the software, any trading strategies, or any information provided in connection with the company. Trey, good afternoon to you. <laughs> Thanks for coming. I hope you're doing well. Uh, let's go ahead and um, I just want to introduce our, our guest speaker today. Um, Rahul has been uh, with Metastock and an avid user of Metastock for longer than I've actually been part of the company. I think he uh, started a, a dealership with uh, Metastock uh, a year or two before I started, which would have been 21, 22 years ago. Um, Rahul is one of the best presenters we bring on. We bring him on more often, but you know he's he's often tied up doing like CNBC, CNN India uh, uh, analysis. Uh, but it's always good to have him on here. Um, the trading system, the RMO trading system, as many of you know, uh, is the very first trading methodology I ever used to start trading, uh, and I love it. I, I like to talk about it. It's a very simple method. What you're going to see with Rahul today is uh, he has a way of really simplifying and explaining stuff in a way that's concise and easy to digest, easy to understand. Um, it's why he's probably one of the most prolific trading trainers in Canada with multiple offices across, or Canada, India, <laughs> uh, with multiple offices around uh, India, but none in Canada. So. Uh, I have nothing but respect for Rahul, uh, just a great guy. And uh, let's go ahead and I'm going to get out of the way. Uh, let's go ahead and bring uh, Rahul on here. Uh, thank you, Jeff. I hope everyone can hear me. Uh, you sound great to me. Okay, great. And you see my lovely blue screen. I see a lovely blue screen. So I'm just going to, I'm going to go ahead and mute myself and, and let you take over. Thank you, Jeff. That was very kind of you. Appreciate the uh, generous introduction you always give me. Uh, first of all, welcome friends. Uh, good afternoon to most of you. Uh, and I think uh, I was seeing the polls and uh, as the name of the webinar suggests, today's a day where I'm going to be discussing the RMO and uh, a bit on the ATM studies that I enjoy using with the uh, US market data and it's US equities that I have. So most of my examples, 90% of them are all US equities and I've tried to be uh, mostly up to date uh, as in with data right up to the previous trading day. So hopefully that would give you a more current perspective. And the idea of doing such a session is A, uh, when we discuss it for a particular region, you know, in this case, the US equities, it's more focused. It's with examples which probably you and I want to see and you and I trade. Secondly, it makes things more practical and realistic because with the up-to-date examples. And uh, I'm also going to show you a few integration techniques which you can probably deploy and uh, also showcase to you a few of the strategies within the ATM that I use. So first, I'm going to start with the inbuilt RMO, which each one of you have inside of Metastock. And then I'm going to talk to you about three or four different uh, strategies that I use very consistently uh, with the ATM. So uh, without further ado, I've got a lot at hand. So I'm going to uh, run through the presentation to start with with the RMO as mentioned. So the RMO, in case you're wondering what does RMO stand for, it's actually the Rahul Mohinder Oscillator. That's how we got the name RMO. And uh, when we look at the RMO, the idea is to help you simplify the trend. So the module detects the primary trend and people often ask me, what is the primary trend to you? And if I could simplify that to a number, I'm looking at the major long-term trend and the number would be 60 bars or more, 
right? So if I'm looking at anything beyond 60 bars of data, and typically those on the end of day or daily charts, we're talking three months because 20 trading days a month typically, so 60 bars is equal to three months. But if you're on a five minute chart, 60 bars is very different. It could just be one day. So 60 bars of data or greater is what I define the primary or the longer term trend as. And the Armo's whole focus is around detecting this primary trend and helping you trade in the direction of this primary trend. Now, when you look at regular market strings, in this case, you can all see this chart has a beautiful uptrend. But what we do need to understand is within this uptrend, you have phases where the market is uh, a bit choppy where it corrects. You have a phase where the market is sideways, where you have a good 20, 25 bars, which get locked into a range. So not all trends are straight line up. They are definitely made up of peaks and troughs. And we need an indicator that can help us tell us that, look, hey, this drop that you're seeing or this sideways price action that you're seeing is still within a bullish concrete trend. And one should not start getting worried when the market drops you. One should read this as a corrective move. One should read this as an opportunity and make use of it. So the armor is all there to help you understand is my primary trend up is my primary trend down which is the direction i need to be trading in and let's say if you do see a change in the primary trend that itself is a major opportunity for us as traders so uh, quite a, a you know a line of attack that we take with the rmo because it a helps us recognize the existing trend in terms of the longer term trend it helps me recognize the direction i want to trade in even short term or medium term because obviously if the market is bullish in the long haul i want to be taking my shorter term trades in that stronger force direction so it's very important that we recognize this with accuracy and finally if you do identify the trend change with the RMO we're going to be looking at a potential trade in the reverse direction so to simplify the RMO is a histogram form which I'm going to plot so that's where you see it and I've taken it with uh, Google in this case this is a, a 30 minute chart that I put up and the idea was to uh, put up about two weeks of data which we've got up here and you can see an uptrend and a downtrend which is in place from the 23rd odd we've had this nice big run up and you can see the RMO oscillator on top that's the green histogram if the histogram is trading above zero it means this is bullish don't worry about the size or the curvature of the oscillator we just need to see if the RMO or the oscillator or histogram is above zero if it's above zero it's bullish and like you see in the last 30 40 bars it's been below zero and therefore, this entire phase has been negative, which is why we've probably seen this drop. So the RMO being in bullish zone tells me that the market's main or strong primary trend is in force on the upside. And if the RMO is below zero, let's keep this rule in mind. Very simple, very visual. Now, a couple of things we need to keep in mind. Some of you may enjoy seeing the oscillator on the top. And some of you may like to see the x-axis ribbon so we have an expert over there and this is all default in case you're wondering how do i get it right click on your chart apply template and click on rmo trade model that's how you get it it's automatic the arrows the bar colors the oscillator everything is going to come up automatically now you will notice over here that we have got different elements on this chart we've got arrows to address We've got the colors on the bars, which are blue and red, which we all need to understand. So we'll talk about that in a bit, but very quickly to recap that rule, if the RMO is positive or the histograms above zero, we are bullish, our long-term trend is up, we want to look for buy arrows, we want to look for blue bars when that RMO is up. So notice every blue arrow that I see when the RMO is in bullish zone is an opportunity for me to buy. And every sell arrow that I see when the RMO is negative is an opportunity for me to uh, go short on this market. And again, I would like to remind traders that when we look at a system, if I can get seven out of 10 times the correct direction, my odds of winning are definitely going to go up. If I can trade in the direction of the stronger force 
in the direction of the big picture, I am automatically increasing my odds of winning. And more importantly, it's not just the success rate of, of having seven out of 10 correct in that direction of that long-term trend, but it's also the fact that you're going to be trading in the direction of a stronger force. The yields are going to be quicker, faster, and more like you want it. So it's more impulsive in terms of trade results. Typically, you know, I get the question in how many bars do you tend to see some profit? 15 to 20 bars is my rough window within which you know, I would see profit. So nine out of 10 times, I would clearly expect that if my trades worked out, I should see a good return in 15 to 20 bars. And of course, from there, I need to start using a trailing stop model to kind of juice that trade out. So the RMO is gonna help me trade in the direction of this longer term trend, in the direction of this stronger force, which is why we need to be very focused. Now let's come down to the core rules. To simplify, I like to be very rule-based. My whole approach uh, in trading has been very rule-based. And let me remind you, I'm not someone here who's trying to sell you a newsletter. I'm not someone here who's trying to tell you that you need to rely on somebody else. But I'm trying to tell you that you can be self-sufficient when you have the power of tools like Metastock. Uh, you have the ability to trade more individually and independently. And this is very important. If we want to be successful in trading, we need to feel and understand it ourselves, take our own decisions, be responsible for the gains or losses that we make and understand what we're doing. So that's very relevant. We need to be in control. So when I give you rules like this, it's more to channelize you, more to give you a rule-based approach so that it's not left to, okay, let me draw this line and plot this average and change the time frame. So that's a very important uh, uh, idea that we need to channelize ourselves. And you know, building on this, I may give you these rules, but if I say, look, it's seven out of 10 times keeping you in the correct direction, the problem with a lot of us as traders is we keep changing our time interval. You know, you start by looking at a trade maybe on a five minute chart, and then when it starts going wrong, you make it a 15 minute chart. Right. This is what happens. A lot of us, we start with a daily chart and, you know, when push comes to shove when we come close to that stop, we try and average out, we try and look at a weekly chart. And more often than not, I can tell you more than half the times people who are changing their time frame, they're doing so simply because they've started losing money on a trade. And I don't want you to do that. I want you to look at one time frame, focus on the same stock with the same rules 20 times in a row to realize, am I 15 correct, 14 correct? What is that number? You won't get the real feel if you don't stick to the same stock, same rules, same amount of exposure each time. That's very important. If you're gonna keep toggling between stocks and time frames, you're never gonna realize the actual feel that uh, you know the indicators are giving you or the performance these indicators are giving you. So I might show you all these rules and you might see, hey, it's looking good, but then when you, when you start the implementation, if you're gonna to keep toggling around with time frames or stocks or symbols, it's gonna be a, an issue. So bear that in mind, that's why I took a moment. Now you may wonder that, hey, why am I not interested in looking at a daily confirmed with a weekly, et cetera? Why am I not talking about this time frame integration? Why am I not stressing like a lot of folks do that, you know, look higher up, look lower down? You know, A, it's also decreasing your efficiency because you're going to work harder. But when you look at the RMO system, more importantly, the RMO or the oscillator itself is handling the long term. The arrows are handling the short term. The bar colors are handling the medium term. So these three rules which I've given you, the buy arrow is like saying the short term signal. The blue bar is like saying the medium term signal. And the RMO oscillator being above zero is the long-term signal. So what I'm really looking for is an integration of short, medium, and long-term. So the indicator, the suite, the template as a whole is handling that. You don't need to be you know, looking at, oh, let's go one time frame down and one time frame up. So the idea of using something like the RMO is to be a little more holistic, to try and reduce the workload, to try and make your focus as a trader and not that of an analyst because a lot of us get lost in too much of analysis and we, we forget that we're here to really work ourselves up as traders. So a buy arrow indicates the short-term strength, a blue bar indicates the medium-term strength, 
which obviously means I could get these three signals across three different uh, bars or candles. It could. It doesn't have to be that all three come in together. In fact, it's rare to find all three to come in together, and I wouldn't attach any special significance to that. I need to basically see where have I got all three lined up. So likewise, if I'm trying to sell short the market, I want to make sure I have a sell arrow, in other words, a downward facing arrow, a red colored bar, the bar would automatically be painted red, indicating medium term weakness, and the RMO going into a bearish zone, right? So if you look at a price chart now, you'd notice over here blue bars. So look at the four different verticals I've, I've drawn, and I'm going to start with the first solid vertical in April. So we've got a blue bar, which says that's my buy point, right? Why is that my buy point? I've got a blue colored bar. I've got the RMO that's gone from bearish to bullish. And you can notice over here, it's it's gone bearish to bullish, whether you look at the x-axis. And I got the arrow, which came in earlier. Obviously, the arrow comes in quicker because it's the short term. And then I got the blue colored bar, which is the medium term. And then it coincidentally happened that the long term also has changed with that. So you've got all three lined up on this particular day, which means I'm going to be buying the market above the high of that breakout bar. We call that the breakout bar. Why do I further uh, give emphasis to this part because it's the first breakout. It's coming after a series of red. Notice you've got 10, 15 red bars behind it. Notice you've got an RMO bearish zone turning into a bullish zone. So it's really my first breakout. I'm jumping out from a bear zone to a bull zone. I'm jumping out from a bunch of red bars to blue bars. So very relevant to me. Now, why have I marked the three other lines as dotted lines? They're dotted lines simply because you could rate them as add-on or secondary signals. The trend is already up and these have come. This is a blue bar, buy arrow, arm are bullish. Blue bar, buy arrow, arm are bullish. You got, you got all the rules in sync. So the 3D buy, as I would call it. Why do I call it 3D? Because the three rules, the three dimensions are the bar color, the arrow, and the arm are bullish. If they've all been fulfilled, and the idea is, again, let's not become... Uh, over mechanical in a black box. Let me help you channelize your decision making process. Don't look for that holy grail because you know there are a lot of other elements which I'm going to talk to you about which can take the stakes of this RMO so much higher. It's not about trying to just achieve a certain hit rate. It's also about trying to juice out the maximum out of a trade. It's also about trying to assess which is a better signal versus another signal. We need to be able to grade those signals. That's very important to me because it's often that choice which makes a world of difference. So the dotted lines, the dotted verticals that you see, I rate them as add-on or secondary signals because the RMO is already bullish. I need you to focus on the first breakout where the RMO was in bearish zone, turning into a bullish zone for the very first time. So that's the point which I need to focus on. That's the area I'm looking for in terms of first breakout. So if I rotate back to that 30-minute uh, chart, which I was showing you on, on Google, you can notice over here, it's been bullish all the way. Where's my first sell? So somewhere on the 30th of August, around that uh, 1,235 odd marker, you have red bars in place, the arrows are in place, but where am I going to sell short? The RMO has gone negative. So, you know, probably somewhere around there, I'm going to use those bars lows as an opportunity to sell short. And, you know, we've we've seen that good $40 drop that comes in after that. The next 15 to 20 bars, typically, as I was telling you, uh, that can be an impulse reaction. So that's an example of a bear move. We're looking at everything sinking in on the bear side. Now, let's take you to a, a daily chart on the same uh, stock. So I'm just magnifying an area of August, September, October in Google. And the idea of magnifying it is to give you some more specifics. Why do I say buy above the high or sell below the low? This is very relevant. So notice over here, the RMO is a sell. You got red colored bars, which come in in August. You got the red arrow. They trickle down, but you're waiting that the RMO is not yet negative. Finally, the RMO gets negative closer to that point, and that bar's low is never really taken out, so you cannot go short. Sell weakness. I need you to make sure that when I get a sell signal, I'm not just going then going short. I want to sell below the low of that bar. I want to watch it a few ticks below it. Maybe I want to see it's five or 10 minutes trading below that low. If it doesn't happen, you're not triggering short, right? You look at the second 
signal over here, which is mid-September. Again, I got the red bar, I got the red arrow, and why have I chosen this bar? Because this is the first time when the RMO switched from bearish, to, uh, from bullish to bearish. So below the low of that bar, again, not taken out, okay? I need to look for where I have the signal, where I have all three red bar, red arrow, and then I'm gonna go short. Is this a very good signal to use? Not really, because there's no arrow. I might see it over here. So notice all the orange lines are not viable. But when you look at this blue line, I got the blue bar, the buy arrow, the RMO bullish. It's coming out of a bunch of red. You know, ideally I want to see even a bigger trend, but you know, that's definitely a doable buy trade. But you know, wishful thinking, if I had a nice big crack and I had a triggered RMO sell in place and then I get a buy, that's even better for me. Right, so basically, I am trying to get to the point that focus on the first breakout, the first buy, not the second, not the third, not the fourth. In fact, quite honestly, I typically only want to work with the first buy. It's rare that I even take the second signal. I focus on the first breakout, and that's how I'd recommend you to trade because trading with the first breakout is the most relevant. Uh, friends, again, you can see three vertical lines here, three solid verticals. They mark the points where uh, the, you know, we've got the blue bar, the buy arrow, all three are in sync, the 3D buy, the 3D sell. And why have I titled this sli slide as buy strength and sell weakness? When I say buy strength, it's a very age old Dow concept. The Dow theory talks about this in multiple ways. The easiest way to confirm strength is if you are looking at a long-term breakout, simply go above the high of that bar. So look at that bar, you got the blue bar, you got the buy arrow and we're expecting a long-term breakout, just cross the high. What if it doesn't cross it? You're not gonna take that buy, right? So if I get a sell, why have I marked this bar and not here? Because I got the arrow there, I got the bar color, but I waited for the RMO to also change. So that's the point where all three synced in. So I'd sell below the low of that bar, right? So. Look at this signal over here. You got the red bar, the RMO went negative, but the low is not broken, sell weakness. So despite you're getting a signal there, you're not going short. So it might have come up as a signal, but you're not going short. You're not triggering that direction, right? And this is where it becomes so relevant. This is where you've got to pay attention to this rule. Don't just, uh, be a black box. When I say be a black box, a lot of traders just say, oh, okay, I got the 3D buy, the blue arrow, the buy signal, just buy it. It doesn't matter. This could be the first breakout. Let's buy it right there because that's a blue bar, a buy arrow. Wait for the high to get crossed. The high is not crossed. Besides, this is not the first breakout. The first breakout is somewhere here where it turned after a bunch of red the first time when it went blue. From a bearish, the first time when the RMO went into bullish. Concentrate on the first breakout. Concentrate on buying above the high of the breakout bars. Okay, even this buy over here is more of an add-on because there's no triggered sell behind it. The RMO didn't really fire. You didn't get a bunch of 10, 15 reds. You didn't get, you know, this turning from a triggered sell zone, a triggered RMO bearish zone to a bullish zone. So I need you to understand this difference. This is what makes a dramatic difference in terms of your hit rate, performance, and getting the better trades. Don't, I mean, everyone can say, okay, I want all three things and boom, I'm gonna go. Uh, we get, we tend to get over mechanical and we all do. But if I can get you rule-based and at the same time, get you to understand which are the higher quality trades, that's the first buy, that's the first sell, that's the first buy, you'd get the most meaty, the most meaningful, the most potential trades, and you would have the ability to say that, okay, this is a better trade than taking a buy you know, over here or taking a buy over here. I want to concentrate on how to get that. And once you get used to first breakouts, you probably would be addicted to them that you won't want to look for second breakouts. Now let's make things even sweeter. When you get a breakout, so let's look at this example here. You got a blue bar and look at the circled area. The blue bar comes in, the buy arrow comes in, the RMO swing from a bearish to a bullish. So you pretty much say, hey, I want to buy above the high and it does go above the high, but it doesn't really follow through. And the reason it doesn't follow through is friends, another very important confirmation I want is volume. When you look at wherever you get the breakout signal, look two bars behind it, look two bars ahead of it, and you see that there's no volume. When I say no volume, 
by default, when you apply the RMO template, you get volume with a certain moving average. It's a 50 period moving average of volume that I've plotted. If you can see that the volume is all under average, how am I going to follow through into a trend? Because remember, I'm getting a long-term signal. I'm getting a blue bar buy arrow. I'm getting my 3D buy. It's a first breakout. I'm buying above the high. But what's not good? It doesn't have money backing it. It doesn't have a lot of interest. It doesn't have a lot of action. And if there's no money and no interest and no volume backing the signal, it's not going to be as relevant. It's probably a low grade buy, even though it's a first breakout. So friends, here's another way. You've learned that I want to focus on the first breakout. You've also learned if I can marry in volume. And to be very specific, I, I mean, I'm telling you, look two bars back, two bars forward, very simple way that even if the volume comes in later, what do I look for? I want slightly above average volumes, maybe 15, 20% more than average volumes is good enough. But just having an average volume or under average volume doesn't speak very well for the equity. It doesn't speak very well for the signal quality. So when you look at the buy that comes in over here, which is mid-August again, we're looking at blue bars. The first blue bar comes in, the arrow comes in, the RMO goes bullish. And what do I see? Look, two bars behind, I got nice solid above average volume. In fact, this is so solid, it's probably the highest volume that's visible on the chart. So that's where you can make this trade even better. You want to definitely take such a trade because it's got the volume behind it, right? So friends, when you get a sell signal or a buy signal, red bar, red arrow, RMO bearish, look down. Plus minus two bars, under average volume, it's a no-go. So you've learned two very strategic ways to pick better entries. You're going to focus on the first breakout. You are going to look at that volume being above average when you get the signal. So you've got two solid ways to perk up your hit rate and get higher quality RMO trade signals. Now, another question I get is, look, what if the stop feels too large? And in case you're not familiar, what's the stop I, I tend to use is a five bar low or a five bar high. So if I'm buying, I'm going to count five bars back and see what's the low point and try and use that stop. Now, sometimes that's going to be very large for you and sometimes uh, it's going to be affordable. It just depends which kind of a market you're in. Now, what do I do? So let's say you've got a high quality signal. It's a first breakout. You've got the volume. You've got everything you want. It ticks your boxes and you want to go ahead. Now, there are two sides of the brain. One side of my brain is thinking risk and one side of my brain is thinking reward. Now, the risk side of my brain thinks, hey, this stop loss is too big. Should I just avoid this trade? But my reward side of the brain or my greedy side of the brain thinks that why should I miss it? This is a high quality signal. So we need to bring in a blend. So one choice is you avoid trading. And I don't think that's the most prudent. The second choice is really I could tweak or tighten my stop. But really, I don't want to do that because when I talk about the hatred and the performance and all of that, uh, we've assumed you are taking that five bar high or low. So I want to stay with technically correct stops. So I don't want to tighten my stop. What I should do is tweak my entry approach. Maybe I buy a smaller quantity if the stop is too large. Maybe I buy a small lot above the high and then buy another lot if she drops. So if the equity drops down closer to the stop, maybe I add more trade. Let's show you a concrete example. So let's say we want to buy above the high of this bar, but the stop is too low. Maybe that's too much for you. For someone, it may not be. But maybe for you, it may be a very big stop. So I buy a little bit above the high. Now, why do I buy a little bit above the high? Because I don't want to miss it. What if it's a runaway buy market? So I buy a little bit. Let's say I buy 50% above the high. And I'm going to buy another 50% in the midpoint. What's the midpoint? My entry price is there. My stop's there. I kind of circle out the midpoint area uh, and buy. So look at this. The market drops there. That's my opportunity to buy because it's not always that you're going to have a straight line run up. Now, the good thing about this is I've averaged my entry out and at the same time, I've kept the technically correct stop. And later on, when you see what happens to the equity, nice rally up. You got a strategic entry here and a strategic entry there. Now, someone may worry that, oh, you know, you got some red bars after that. Do I get worried? Do I stop out? No, that's your stop. Your stops, your stop, your entries, your entry, nothing changes. Besides, even if the RMO turned negative, I would have upgraded it, but look at that volume. 
there's no volume it's a low volume signal stick with the original stop so really that's how the trade works out so you know you can don't mechanicalize it be objective in our trade approach be understanding as to what the signal quality is how my entry and exit can be handled better and you'll automatically start doing much better now let's look at exit models so one side of the exits is of course if the trade goes wrong you have the stop in place which i just discussed but about what about the exits so usually i like to use a trailing stop model and you can use an indicator within the template called the exit swing signal that's a good indicator to use once the trade is profitable and the second is to use the atm trend decider levels i personally use the trend decider levels because i find them a lot more uh, uh, objective and a lot more realistic it gets me out much later and probably almost where the trend is about to end i'll talk to you a little bit about those trend decider levels shortly but to start with what's the exit swing signal that's inbuilt into the rmo template so when you look at the uh, exit swing signal it's this green histogram if it trickles below the red line or trickles below 75 i want to use this low as my trailing stop so there you are i'm going to use a low now when i say this low am i going to put it exactly at that low no i want to put a few ticks below it maybe watch it five minutes trading below that low right it's not just a one little uh, a one cent move and you want to get out of it you want to make sure it's a few ticks below it you want to make sure it's kind of hung in there for four or five minutes before you just dive in okay so there you are so you've got a rotation from a positive to below 75 use this low so that way that was my original stop then i keep lifting it up and you can that way carry and follow through this trade trade identification friends is extremely easy i pay a lot of attention to this which is why when you buy the atm power screener you do get so the atm just in case you're wondering is the automated trend modules that's the add-on that's available to you and that gives you the integrated buy and sell so wherever you have all three in place so in other words the blue bar the buy arrow the arm of bullish you simply run an integrated buy and sell it's going to find exactly those stocks which have met that criteria today right now on the current bar i have all three integrated buy and sell so quite a solid scan you get there but for those of you who don't use the atm add-on the other six scans are inbuilt into metastock so you could manually scan for these uh, and go one by one on them and try and look for where you've got a synchronized result but those with the atm just simply run the integrated buy and sell in case you're thinking what's the power screener the power screener is a separate application we provide to you for free when you buy the atm uh, so the power screen as the name suggests it screens different opportunities so it's got scores of indicators so i could put in a stock list of my choice uh, you've got rmo buy signals sell signals breakout catchers trend deciders candlesticks stochastics the works every single atm study every single rmo study is fully integrated in and the beauty about the power screen is you don't have to run it what's the difference between the power screen and the explorer the power screener once you switch it on it's on it's ticking live tick by tick it's running all the time if you have real time data if you have end of day it works with end of day data as well so you just simply open the program and it tells you you know you put in a stock list of your choice one time and it immediately pops up with the opportunities for you on up to date data so very powerful you don't even have to take the initiative of running a scan it sends you an email alert it has a voice alert that voices out there's a buy on such and such stock on the rmo so uh, the beauty is it is self sufficient it doesn't depend on you running a scan or you having to uh, come in every bar so let's say if i'm on a five minute bar i'm not going to run the explorer every five minutes but here the power screen is going to pick it up or if i'm even on a daily bar maybe you're not looking at your computer that day but if your power screen is on it can shoot you an email alert so very powerful tool there uh, within the power screener so to recap if you want to improvise the inbuilt armor i just showed you the first breakout is very relevant the add-ons are less relevant use filters buy a few ticks above the high right 
watch it a few minutes above it, then fire it. You saw umpteen number of examples there where you got the red bar, the signal, but the low is not taken, didn't trigger. So keep that filter, buy above the high of the breakout or sell below the low of the breakout. Very important. Time frame integration, I explained to you, don't complicate things. Often too much of confirmation leads to complication. I like to put it this way. When you have a suite like the armor working, it's already handling the short term, medium term and long term elements. That's already factored in. Indicator integration. If you are using some other indicators which you've been very successful or comfortable or you want to reconfirm it, fine, fair enough. You can bring that in. But remember, let that not be a deterrent for you to trade in. You know, for example, the RMO may be all buy, but your particular indicator may not be. You know, let that not stop you from a signal. Maybe if it is, you trade a bigger quantity. Fibonacci. I love using Fibonacci, particularly, I'm not going to cover Fibonacci here, but just to give you a, a bird's eye on this, Fibonacci projections. I love that tool inside of Metastock. Um, not many programs out there give you that facility. So great tool to be using Fibonacci projection. There's some good help there. It helps me uh, forecast some kind of a price target to my RMO trades as well. So I like to use that. Uh, I intend talking about uh, the projections as well in uh, upcoming live sessions uh, uh, as they come up. The volume as a confirmation I showed you, very important. When you get that first breakout, look for above average volume and then confirm it. So here are some wonderful ways you can make an already solid system in the RMO even more refined, even more confirmed, even more accurate. Now, when you have the ATM or the uh, automated trend modules add-on that I developed, we recently, rather, you know, probably a year or two back, we added the super filter, uh, two years back to be more precise. We looked at how we could better the RMO itself. Now, I always get the question is, what's the difference between the RMO super filter that I've used? Well, if I could simplify it, the super filter is going to mark four bar colors. If you notice on this chart, which is a chart of Tesla, uh, we've got four different bar colors, and this is probably a 30 minute or an hourly chart that I have up here. Uh, orange, red, light blue, dark blue, right? Dark blue gives you a feel of extreme strength. When dark blue becomes light blue, it shows it's moving out. Then it goes into red, which is fierce bear trends, right? And orange. So it gives you a pulse of the trend. More importantly, it filters out the whipsaws of the RMO. You know, there is a phase where the RMO does flip-flop. So when you look at this chart around the 22nd, 23rd of August, you see the RMO was bearish, turned bullish, turned bearish, turned bullish. It flip-flopped around that zero mark a little bit. You'd have to do a lot of manual integration. Maybe you'd get saved looking at the volume being under average, etc. That's fine. But you know, the beauty is we married in a lot of these concepts into the super filter. And what's even better with the super filter, when it stays orange, you're not worried about, oh, the R most turned positive, right? So the whole idea is to give you a more refined view. Often the super filter would give you an earlier signal than the RMO itself. Now, you may ask me why. So the RMO typically works of a static value, but the super filter works of a dynamic value. So in other words, it tweaks to the volatility of the stock. It's tailor-made or custom fit based on the price volatility. So it's really optimized in terms of value. It's designed around the chart that you open, right? It's not using a fixed value. It's going into the last 300 bars of data. It's looking at what the volatility has been and what's the correct value to be using and then deploys it. So the super filter is a super refined version, which means the super filter actually supersedes or is more accurate than the RMO itself. It's more refined. And let's show you more examples with it. Notice on this chart, you get a first-hand feel over here. Uh, right in the beginning, it's been blue all the way and you know it. I'm basically trading the buy side of this market. And then I've got the sell phase of this market. Now let's show you a few things. November, December over here, I've basically been bullish because I've got all dark blue, light blue. It's, as long as it's blue, whether it's light blue or dark blue, you're basically trading the buy side, right? So you're not worried about the armor going from bullish to bearish. So that little chop that you see is well taken care of. You can see three or four chops that happened here, 
totally taken care of. So many people think that, oh, Rahul, have you made the super filter just a slower version so that it works more efficiently? No, it's a tailor-made version. It's an optimized version. It's an indicator that's tweaking to the volatility of your chart. For example, look here. Now, you got the red bars which come in before the RM or even went zero, below zero. Red is extreme bearish, right? It's not even orange, it's dark red. So notice here the cell comes in much before the original RMO. Now, can I take that cell? Yes, but ideally you probably would say I'll take a little bit here and I'll go all out when I get the RMO as well below zero. But that first hand feel, you know, here it's come faster than the RMO itself. Here it's slowed down. So you can notice how the indicator is slowing and speeding based on the performance of the stock. So like you see over here, dark blue bar comes in when the RMO is negative. Gives you the first hand feel like get out of your short position, start thinking buy, and you get that immediate feel. So even the little chop that you see over here, it goes bearish, bullish. It's all light blue. When it becomes dark red and the RMO is negative, you go with it. So notice over here, it was faster than the RMO. And over here, the red comes in slower than the RMO. So it's self-adjusts. So if it's a choppy market, the good thing is it's self-adjusting. So the super filter is probably my best bet in terms of further filtering out the RMO. It's kind of my go-to indicator every time I open a chart. So let's look at at and I'm going to look at two intervals. This one's probably a, a 60 minute to start with and then we'll move to a, sorry, this is a daily and then we'll move to a, a 60 minute or a 30 minute to move down. So notice over here, at and became a sell somewhere in March. That's a 37, 36 kind of mark there. You got the red bar, red arrow, RMO in negative zone. Okay, when that happens, you kick into a sell trade. And then notice over here how many times the super filter saved me. You got the buy signal in June when you had that sudden gush up. But notice it's still orange bars. The original RMO would have flipped probably from red to blue. And I recollect seeing it blue. But with the super filter, it's orange. So I am not going to be taking that buy. I'm not going to be worried about this being bullish, right? And, you know, I basically stayed short all the way March, April, May, June, July, August. So you're not going short. Similarly, over here, you get the blue bar. You see the under average volumes. You're not going to take it, right? Despite it being blue, et cetera, all that's there. So you can save yourself even further. So if you use the super filter, you saved yourself from these two chops back in June and July where you had the RMO going from bearish to bullish. So it certainly is great refinement. So coming down now to a lower frame, like a, a 30 minute in this case, or a 60 minute in this case, again, back on at and you can see this right up to yesterday. Basically, you had a bear trend and notice how, look look down where the, I've circled those little areas where the arm was going bearish, bullish, bearish, bullish. We have seen absolute refinement, all red. The little light blue that comes in even here, the high is not taken out. So you've just been short. You've just been long. You're not worried that this went to bearish. It's been dark blue, light blue, and you've only maintained long positions. And when things turned, you had the red bars and the RMO bearish, right? Now, all this is further backed with a lot of commentary. So you have various studies. I mean, I'm not going to cover the whole ATM. I'm doing basically the super filter, or what I call the ATM RMO template. Uh, and then I'm going to show you my trend decider to give you a feel. So it analyzes all the various ang uh, aspects of the ATM within this commentary and gives you a, a concise view. So you've got expert commentary as well. If you're new to this and you want some kind of a uh, handholding into the indicator. Now the trend decider, one of my favorite ATM studies by far, uh, along with the ATM RMO, I always use the trend decider. In fact, I probably don't like to trade if I don't have the trend decider suite agreeing with me. So really important for me personally, and I think all of us here today, whether we trade the US equities, whether you trade any market out there, it's gonna help you a lot. And again, this is multi time frame. I always believe I want to blend in multi time frame straight onto one chart. So I've got three indicators here trend decider daily, which is being derived from a daily chart, a trend decider weekly, and a trend decider monthly level. Basically, these are strong support resistance levels. So let's get down to this. Uh, this is Twitter, 
and this is a 10 minute chart up to date it and you can see over here basically the green line is my trend decider daily level and every day i'm going to get a new level so today i would have got a new level this chart is up till yesterday so you can see on this 10 minute chart if twitter breaks that green line it's bearish if it crosses that green line bullish breaks that green line i had a bearish day so lovely view for a day trader lovely view for a active trader to understand the trend is trend for the day is bullish or bearish but let's say i'm not a day trader and quite honestly i personally don't trade day trade a lot i focus more on trading and holding through a couple of days i find that a sweet spot for myself i like to trend decide a weekly level so this is a chart of win and you can see the weekly level broke on win at 164 163 and we had that crack it went again above the weekly level which means every monday morning I'm going to get a new trend decide a weekly level. So this week's level on win is 149. We broke through that when we're seeing that crack. We've already seen uh, six bucks go off it. So you know every time I cross through that red line, I know the week is bullish. Right now, break the red line, the week is bearish. So it gives me a view for the week. Now the beauty is if I can integrate the trend decide or daily and weekly into one chart, that's how it's going to look. So I've taken a chart of the E mini here and. Uh, when you look at the current month data, it's amazing what you see. If the green line or the trend decided daily is above the weekly, you're basically in a bullish zone, right? So notice, you know, back on the 17th of August, green plopped up above red. Price was around 28, 50, 60, somewhere in that belt. And, you know, we've, we've, the green has significantly been above it until very recently the green just came down below it. So what are the different elements that I'm looking for uh, when I trade? I'm looking for the price trading above the daily and the weekly level. And I'm looking for the fact that the green line is above the red. And all this is automatically built into the scanners, it's built into the expert. So notice that x-axis strip. This bullish and bearish that you see is now based on the trend decider daily and weekly. It's all integrated into this. This is a chart of Walmart to give you more examples. Green went above the red line. Price is trading above the daily and weekly. That's a good buy point. And you keep holding through this trend. Notice where does this trend turn? Around 96. So you could get the whole, you know, seven, eight dollar run over here. You get to participate. It's one of those few indicators which adjust to momentum so beautifully. Now you may wonder, what about here? You know, green, the trend decider daily, the green line slipped below the red. Why have I not marked this? First of all, the price needs to close below it. The price did not close below it. Even if it did, the low of that bar was not taken. So you see it's all handled in. If it's bullish, it's going to stay that way. And when the trend turns, that's where it turns. So it's quite fascinating how it works in terms of performance. Again, this is a chart of the Dow Jones Industrial Average. The, and you can see how your index has been performing. You had the bear phase. And this is a two hour chart that I'm using. So just uh, to get you, I find the two are pretty good with the daily and weekly on the Dow. I find it pretty consistent. The green below the red, get the nice drop. And you can see this is uh, real stuff. This is real up to date charts. You got three solid months of data where you've seen ups and downs. Uh, you got the breakout on the upside. Why have I marked that there? Price is above daily, price is above weekly. When I say close is above daily and weekly, and the green line is above the red. The trend decider daily is above the trend decider weekly, which makes it a buy. So all these dotted, the three dotted lines that you see, they've all, why have I marked them as dotted? Because you've got the signal, but they didn't trigger. Price did close below both. The green line did drop, but the low is not broken. So really you're still maintaining that bullish stance. So that 24,600 buy, the 24,600 bullish stance is maintained right up to date, even till now. So you got the sell which comes up there, but again, the low of 25,800 is not broken. So right now for me as a trader, I'm gonna watch 25,800. If that's uh, uh, broken, then I'd worry, otherwise, you still are intact on that two hour chart, right? So it's it's quite fascinating how you can use this stuff. It's quite accurate. Now you had the one uh, whipsaw, the one bad trade in the last three months over here. You had a sell which comes in, green went below the red. But again, let 
uh, one bad trade, you know, where do you chop it out? You closed above the daily and the weekly, the green went above it, you chop it out. But let one bad trade not deter you. In three months of data that you have up here, you can see how successful, how accurate it's been, and how you've been on the right side of the trend. So I kind of uh, treat this tool as my go-to tool, like the ATM RMO template, which is why I'm talking to you about it today. It's fantastic as a way to trail your stops. It's fantastic to give you a bird's eye view as to or an early signal as to whether the trend is changing or not. In fact, there are a lot of tactical ways you can use it. This is one of the ways I discussed in the pro class as well. And you know, there are a lot of resources on the ATM available. And let me just uh, remind you, there's a whole manual on the automated trend module that's available under your My Download. So go ahead and use that manual that I've written for you. So if you bought the ATM, that's available to you, the manual. In addition to that, the thing which I think can really help you is we've done a master class every year. We've done a pro class. Basically, it's a user-only class, and you would have access to that through your My Downloads as well. So if you subscribed or you do intend to subscribe, don't forget to use those inbuilt resources. The pro classes are definitely a go-to where I get even more specific, right? So here you have, and there we discuss all the various tools. You know, there are, there are a series of videos which we've done for you. So every time the exit swing indicator rotates down below 75 and you break the weekly level, that's another good signal that maybe the market's going to get some kind of a correction. So you get out, and since the RMO is bullish, you may say, if I get a little drop, I want to buy back in, right? Or you come back when it rotates back above the blue line and you cross the weekly, that's a good time to get in. So a lot of strategy. If the exit swing rotates down, look at this one. Below 75, I break the weekly level. I can at least exit. I'm not going short, but, you know, maybe get a quick four or five bar down and re-enter because, you know, the RMO is bullish. So a lot of tactical ways. Another way that I showed you was using the daily and the weekly together. That's another great way. So if trend decider daily is gone above the weekly and the exit swing is getting above 25, that's, again, a great opportunity for me to buy. So more and more examples can be shown, but really that's the crux of it. The trend decider does that wonderful job of uh, integrating the trend decider daily, weekly. I didn't talk of the monthly, but if your horizon also includes a, a month plus horizon, you can also merge in that level. But again, I like to use it more with the daily, weekly. I think that's more practical, more uh, easy to use. Let's talk about uh, the strength weakness index or the SWI which is again another tool I always like to look at. And the reason I look at the SWI is because most of the tools refer to price data very extensively. The strength weakness index in the ATM refers to volume data. So volume data is what's being referred to extensively. The indicator does not look at price data. It only looks at volume data. And it's a very simple concept I've married in on the SWI. First of all, how does it look? And everything has a template. Right-click, Apply Template, ATM, SWI. If you want the Trend Decider that I showed you, right-click, Apply Template, ATM, Trend Decider. If you want the ATM RMO with the Super Filter, right-click, Apply Template, ATM, RMO is the name of the template. So we've built templates for everything. We've built experts for everything. We've built explorers for everything, plus what you'd really enjoy is that power screen application which automatically does the scan and doesn't depend on you to do the exploration. All you do is set it to your custom stock list, choose a time frame that you wanted to scan off, and it'll do it for you automatically. Right? So the SWI looks like this. It's this red line, and you can see how it dissects this chart. If they're red bars, it's in other words, the bars are trading below the SWI line, you're bearish. If the bars are trading above that red line, you're bullish. So what is this doing? How is it using volume? It really looks at when price goes up, does volume also go up? When price goes down, is the volume also increasing? So in other words, we've all read this in the classical books of technical analysis that you know, a breakout accompanied with volume or an uptrend accompanied with volume is strength. And if you have a fall in prices with an increase in volumes, that also shows weakness in the trend, right? So basically, volume supports the trend. So I married that concept in and I said, hey, if the volume is flowing up with the price, 
this SWI is going to be below. But the minute the volume gets disbalanced, in other words, look at that, price has gone down and the volume flow is negative, it's automatically going to switch around for you. So do I use the SWI as standalone? I don't. I like to use this more as supportive. It's one of those tools where, unlike the ATM RMO or the trend decider, which is more individual, this is really more supportive for me. And it gives me a first-hand view. So here's a chart of Ford. And uh, I've again applied this on an hourly. And you can see how if the price has been red, it's automatically uh, giving you a signal that the volume flow is negative. It turns blue when the volume flow is positive. And again, you have the little uh, problem area here where the volume flow is negative. But again, if you sink in the RMO, etc., it really makes things a lot better. As I told you, I'm not using the SWI alone, but just even alone as the SWI, the, it's lovely to get a perspective just isolated on volume, just volume flows. So when Ford broke 985, you got that view that, you know, it's, it's you know, the volumes have turned. And if you want to analyze it manually, the price started dropping at the sudden volume uptick, which is so strong that it disbalances the buy volumes or the trend that went up. So the SW is a great tool uh, to use with volume. That's another chart of Nike that you see. This one's on a intraday chart again. And you can see how it's it's fantastically helping you read volume. And notice I can put my cursor on any point and look at the commentary and you can see the RMO is negative, the SWI is in a bearish pulse. So it's, it's there to aid you. It's there to help you uh, further confirm uh, your trade setup, right? So all of this, friends, I mean, uh, is available all of these things so whether it's the SWI the trend decider it's all available with scans which give you clear-cut buy and sell stamps find those opportunities for you and they ensure that you never really miss a trade right so the idea is you may not be looking at a particular stock but once you are using the power screener you don't have to be looking at all the stocks. You don't have to be manually running explorations. In fact, it even you can enter your positions and see your mark to mark profit and loss. You can, you know, there's a ton of stuff you can do. So very, very powerful tools there. I think it's really your go to screen. It's really that screen which you jump to your watch list, your quote board, call it what you want. But more importantly, you get even the background colors of the super filter, the breakout catcher, the works. So you have 30 different indicator fields I give you there, whether it's, you know, MACTs, Bollinger's, breakout catchers, RSI's, uh, all the ATM studies. Uh, and you can, you know, for example, you may be saying, I want to find stuff where the RSI is 20 and lower. You can run a scan for that. I mean, you can, you don't have to run a scan. Build in a power screener that wherever they're 10 and lower, flash right up. So it'll, you know, come up. It's got features like auto sort and email alerts and voice alerts, which really are game changing. So in addition to the power screener, you have explorations that are available to you. Uh, in the power screen, I definitely urge you to use this because unlike a lot of add-ons and tools that exist over there, this is dynamic, it's optimized, it's self-adjusts. And you know, one of the things I must highlight for you, I've often used things which are optimized and adaptive, so to say, but then what happens is they change past signals, they change the past values. Now, the great thing about the ATM is once it's stamped to buy or a sell or a red bar or a blue bar, it never changes. It doesn't backtrack on you, right? So if it's giving you a buy two years later, it's still going to be at the same point because that's how it's going to be reliable. So despite optimizing every day and tweaking every time you open the chart, it does not erase any past signals. So the beauty is the power screen, especially that super filter trend decider and SWI, those are great launch pads to move ahead with. I definitely encourage you to try it. Well, in tomorrow's webinar, I'm also going to be covering a little bit about options where I'm going to talk about my counter trend strategies, the RMO2 strategies. So if you're someone who really looks at options, uh, definitely come in for tomorrow's session as well which is again at the same time where I'll show you some of the US stocks and uh, how if you were trading options, you could do things. I myself personally trade a lot of uh, the options. So really enjoy that element of, of trading. But all these scanners are inbuilt. You, never, you would not have the uh, opportunity to say, oh, I missed this signal and I forgot to run the scan and I didn't look at it. 
it's always doing it. So the beauty is you can even set a custom stock list. You can set it up the way you like. So extremely powerful. So it's efficient, optimized, and gives you a plethora of tools to work with. And uh, hopefully it should really help you take your trading to the next level. And the idea is you focus as the trader, you focus as the opportunity detector, you focus as the trade grader where you choose, is this the better one or uh, you know, I should go for a different trade rather than getting too analytical and being busy with drawing lines and crowding up the chart with indicators. I've always believed in the uh, less is more philosophy, the concept of being a little more hands free in trading because you want to be trading. You don't want to be drawing. And uh, that's very important to me. So, uh, friends, I'm going to wrap it up right there, but I'm going to leave it open for any questions that you may have. Uh, Jeff's going to talk to you about how you can avail of offers for the ATM as well. And uh, hopefully for those of you who are uh, going to be uh, joining the live session, which is in Torrance, California, which is coming up next month, I'm going to be there as well. So uh, we'll, we'll have a lot to show you, including a new update, which is coming up, the ATM 3.0. So a lot in store there, friends. Uh, before I, I kind of get into the questions, I want to again thank Jeff for having me. I want to thank Metastock for organizing and educating its users. It's commendable that it's not about just selling stuff out there. It's also about hand-holding you through educating you. So kudos to Metastock. Genuinely, from the bottom of my heart, thank you from a customer side. I appreciate what you do for your clients, and uh, thank you for having me once again. So, Jeff, over to you and over to all the questions. Rahul, we'll have you on anytime you want to come on. <laughs> we love having you on here. So let me um, let me um, just kind of reiterate. There's a few things that I want to talk about. If you have questions, Rahul is going to stay on the line until we run out of them. So now would be a good time to type them. But um, I wanted to kind of just mention a few things. Rahul did a really good job of kind of covering the ATM and talking a little bit about what the power screener does. And um, I wanted to kind of just tell you a few things that uh, maybe he mentioned when I was answering a chat message or something like that. Um, uh, the, power, uh, the ATM has actually been our most successful subscription-based add-on. Customers love it. Um, with it, you're going to get the power screener. Uh, I love the power screener. It allows you to keep profit and loss uh, updated. It allows you to put really literally just about any, well, up to 30 indicators on a screen and be able to get uh, uh, also voice alerts and email alerts and just you name it. It's a very, very good screen. It works really well with real time because it'll update with your Xena subscription if you have one. If you use DataLink, you can use any type of local data that you, uh, that you want to kind of just get a dashboard view of everything. And it really excels at kind of giving you that dashboard view. So I, I love this. Another thing that I wanted to mention is like the systems that are included. I think the reason this has been so popular is it has really like a breakout method, a counter trend method, a new take on uh, the RMO. You guys know I love the RMO, uh, but it has about six different methodologies that are all really well simplified, well optimized to work in the, in the market. And there's just about something for everybody here. If you're looking for something that's really going to identify those breakouts very well, well, there's something there for you. If you like RMO and you want to look at RMO too, there's something there for you. If you look, if you like the strength of weakness, there's something there for you. So people really do love it. The other thing that I wanted to add is as soon as you set up for this, not only are you going to get the manual, what Rahul talked about, you're literally going to have access to four hours of video recording instantly. So um, as soon as you have permission for the product, we put together three, I actually think it's five classes, three, uh, three seminars that kind of cover different systems, and then a master class from 2017 and a master class from 2018 this year that we recorded a little bit earlier. So the other thing that we're doing, uh, which is very, very unusual for this class, is normally if you did power screener on a monthly subscription, you'd pay $129 each and every month for it. Um, if you sign up for it as a result of this webinar, we're going to give you $99 a month for life. So you basically get a permanent $30 discount on your subscription. But in addition to that, we're also going to give you a, six, uh, a, a second month for free. So you'll be able to play with it for $99 for basically 60 days. Uh, and by then, you're going to be able to see really that it, it does provide enough value 
uh, to work for it $99 a month. It's such a small cost for really all of the stuff that you get and the good trading advice that you get. Uh, we do have a yearly offer. Normally that's $1,349 for the year. Um, your permanent discount on that is $1,069. And if you do do the annual package, you're gonna receive one-on-one -on -one training from uh, Viratex support staff or the customer uh, specialist. Uh, so they do a really good job of that. They'll basically sit down with you one-on-one -on -one and, uh, via a WebEx session and kind of walk you through everything. So there's a couple of different things that, um, uh, ways you can take advantage of that. You can give us a call at 800-882-3040. Um, if you're international and uh, you just want to chat, uh, metastock.com slash sales chat is a really good way to go in and take advantage of kind of talking to, uh, to our chat staff. And the last thing that I do want to mention is uh, Rahul is going to be in Torrance with us uh, on October 13th or 14th. Um, we have some of my be uh, some of the best speakers at Metastock uh, speaking at this event. Uh, Don Fishback, of course, Rahul. I love Rahul's in-person sessions. You learn so much more when you're in person with somebody. Anne Marie, um, Anne Marie, and Rahul and I did a boot camp in Vegas a few years ago. I've wanted to invite her to do a Metastock Users Conference ever since because she was an awesome speaker. We've got uh, Rick Sadler, Kelly Clement. Normally it's 350 if you sign up on our website, but uh, we've got some slots available, some seats available, and we're trying to get rid of them. So $99 uh, for a basically a, a two-day session, six different speakers, uh, one of the best events that we do during the year. So. Um, that special is available as a result of this webinar. Give us a call, 800-882-3040. It's the same number I just gave you, uh, or metastock.com slash sales chat. They can get you set up for that. And I would encourage you to do it. I know like with, with the way technology works, it's so easy to kind of pop into a webinar and watch a lot, bunch of YouTube videos. But in my personal experience, for me personally, I learn so much when I can sit there and look at a person and, and talk to them and ask them questions. And these events are great. And for 99 bucks, uh, you can go down to Torrance. Uh, well, you'll have to get to Torrance, <laughs> but you can go down and meet us at uh, uh, basically Torrance, uh, make a bit of a vacation out of it if you want to, but it's a great opportunity. So again, to do that or the users conference or both, uh, just give us a call. If you have questions that we don't answer today, you know, we've got reps here that can help you answer questions and they're all very good. 800-882-3040 or metastock.com slash sales chat. Rahul, are you ready for some questions? Absolutely. Um, Chris Peterson uh, has a question. He has ATM. Thank you, Chris. But when I get a signal there, it won't show up on the same signal in the chart. Oh, I think he means with the power screen or sometimes the, the signals don't uh, match up with the chart. Um, I think it might do have to do with load options. Does that make sense? Yep, absolutely. I think, Chris, the first place I would look at, if you're getting a mismatch between the signal that you're getting on the power screen and the chart, it could just be that uh, you're using a different interval or maybe your load options. If you're loading 500 bars on uh, the, the chart or you may be probably looking at a different uh, interval, often what happens, you use the pre-open and the post-close data. So the power screener has the ability, if you go into the properties, to set it up. You can actually put in the open time and close time of that market and save it up. But again, Chris, if you do run into issues, uh, I'll be willing to uh, have our support guys connect with you and uh, help you through it. But it, it should be absolutely in tally. Uh, Brett Hoffman says hello. Hello, Brett. <laughs> Brett, I think you know Brett, uh, Rahul. But oh, yeah. He's a, he's a big fan of ATM. <laughs> so well, th thanks for coming in today, Brett. Uh, let's see. Um, okay, APD USP. <laughs> I'm sure that's your real name. Uh, says, does it include a Metastock subscription or is it separate? Metastock is a subscription product as well. And it doesn't necessarily include it. Uh, like you can get a DC subscription to Metastock for 59 bucks a month. And um, if you're getting RMO ATM to evaluate everything, we'll give you a free subscription to either Metastock or Metastock real time, either one. 
as part of this whole offer. Because again, what we want to do is we want you to start getting the good signals. Uh, we're sure that once you kind of start using this thing that you're going to love it. Uh, so uh, we'll just give you a subscription to Metastop to go with your uh, subscription to the ATM. Okay. Um, Ganesh says, can you use uh, RMO ATM systems with backtesting? Uh, Ganesh, yes. Uh, we we don't have backtesters pre-built because of the optimization routines, because the values of those indicators keep changing. So it's very difficult to, uh, you know, have an inbuilt back tester but you know back home yes we do use engines when we back test these systems uh, and uh, obviously what you can see if you like the rmo itself obviously the atm is going to be uh, a step up so uh, definitely we we do the back testing back end but we're not able to give that within metastock because we've got a lot of optimization engines running with the values of the back end indicators change Okay, and Rohit asked a question that we got the other night, and I'm going to answer it because I know the answer. I remember from two days ago or <laughs> four days ago. Is the super filter in Metastock and the tick oscillator need signal the same? No, uh, they're different indicators. So that looks like we came on the end of their questions, Rahul. Absolutely. Uh, well, thank you again. Uh, do you have any final words of wisdom for us? <laughs> Well, we I've said a lot of words, and yes, thankfully, it's been recorded if you missed some of those words. So hopefully, wisdom or not, uh, it should definitely help you practically in your trading. I, I'd like to kind of sign off by, by suggesting to those who are new to it uh, or those who are even experienced at it, is consistency is a very important element when you trade any methodology. I, I keep reminding traders not to toggle time frames because it's easier said than done you know practically when you're out there it's very easy that we change from a 5 to a 15 or a 15 to a 60 we keep doing that and and it's sometimes the mind which is overtaking now when you use systems like this if you really want to get you know your performance to the max and push it uh, you know to really feeling what these results really mean you have to bring in that consistency and that would take some discipline. So uh, discipline, like any other business, is very important for us. And uh, I wish you a lot of good luck with it. And again, we're there to help you anytime. All right. Rahul, again, thank you for your time. I know uh, I know. last time we had, a, a, we had to kind of uh, go a bit quick because you had a CNBC interview. So I know your time is very valuable. I really appreciate your spending some time with us. Um, and for those of you that came today, thank you. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the class. I hope it was helpful for you. Uh, with that, uh, we're going to sign off and uh, we'll see you maybe tomorrow at the next one. <laughs>